Good morning. Welcome to IG's Early Morning Call. It's Friday, March the 10th. Let's take a look at the headlines as uh, we have a risk off attitude across the markets today. And uh, this is demonstrated with a sell off in equity markets. We're expecting a lower start to the start of the day's trade across the European markets. Uh, much of what's been going on in the last 24 hours has been centered around banks after Silvergate. Late yesterday, we saw a drop of 60% in tech bank SVB, Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, and this has uh, shaken both the banking sector and the tech sector. Meanwhile, in terms of economic data, we've just seen UK GDP pass a little bit stronger than expected, but it's really all about non-farm payroll today. After Jerome Powell's warning earlier on this week on US interest rates. And we are watching Sterling's reaction to that UK GDP number. Let's take a look at the volatility because I was talking about the uh, big swings in these markets. And in fact, yesterday's trade in volatility was the biggest single day's move in either direction since June last year. And you can see here we're bumping up against the 61.8% retracement. We haven't yet got as high as we were back on the 22nd of February, but the impetus that you can see in the last 18, 24 hours or so has been such that I think really there's a potential for it to continue. That being said, we're off the highs today at the moment of 22.59, but this all means that we are expecting losses at the start today. 24 hour markets yesterday saw a heavy drop on the session in yesterday's trade and going into the overnight session. I want to show you the 30 minute uh, trading day. Let me just quickly take this uh, down to where we were as at the close of last night's session in the London markets. And that's where we were yeah. uh, on this 30 minute chart. And you can see since the close of the London markets yesterday on the way down and on the way down spectacularly as well. Uh, at the moment, we're 77.37. We closed around the 7,880 level yesterday. So we're more than 100 points to drift from where we closed out yesterday's cash session on the trading day in yesterday's uh, uh, final throws. The market's still only a retracement. Uh, we haven't yet got as low as we were back on the 31st of January. Let me just draw a Fibonacci on that just to check to find out where we are in terms of the uh, move that we've got. Ah, it's now below the 76.4% retracement. And if you look at tech, uh, the um, technical analysis around this, one would suggest that perhaps maybe the distance now between where we are and the 7704 total retracement down to that low back on the 31st of January is just a formality. We'll have to see how the day develops. But at the moment, at least we are looking for losses across not just the London markets, but also in Germany as well. This is the German DAX after those 13 month highs we saw back on Tuesday. We've since seen some relatively hefty declines down at 15,429 and the markets across the rest of Europe as well showing similar losses, 7,200 for the French CAC 40 off the record high we saw in that market uh, back intraday on Monday. So you get the picture that we are going into the uh, weaker European session today ahead of non-farm payrolls. Overnight in Asia, after the voluntary liquidation of Silvergate this week, bank shares have fallen around the world and they've fallen across the Asia Pacific markets as well. Nikkei 225 down 1.6%. Hang Seng stock index now down almost 3% on the session today. Also relatively heavy losses as well in the uh, markets in Australia. I want to show you what's happening in Hong Kong, the Hang Seng stock index. Uh, today that we've had uh, this big move in uh, banking stocks uh, and we've seen this tick lower down now to levels not seen since the intraday lows we saw back on the 3rd of Jan uh, January this year uh, for the Hang Seng stock index. Uh, and as I saying, Australia as well, in amongst the losses that we've got. Big losses on the way down. In fact, look at the shape of that counter. I haven't really seen these sort of losses uh, since, uh, when was that, back in September last year. Also saw a hefty day of losses back in November. But I think broadly speaking, this is a, a wide uh, multi-market sell-off that we've got at the moment. And going short on these markets, going to the European session, which seemed to be the position uh, to be. Just want to show you what's been happening. Uh, well, let's, let's let's go with what's going on first of all with Wall Street, because I wanted to show you what happened yesterday on Wall Street before we take a look in more detail about what happened with that Silicon Valley bank. Losses across the board. Um, the uh, big news on yesterday's session was all about uh, this little stock of Silicon Valley Bank. Look at that drop you can see on this chart here, down a whopping 60.4%. And um, the key lender to tech startups this slide coming after the bank announced a one and three quarter billion dollar share sale to help shore up its finances. According to Reuters, it lost another 20 percent in after hours trade last night as some startups who have money deposited there had been advised to withdraw funds. Now, 
The bank launched the share sale after losing around $1.8 billion when it offered a portfolio of assets, mainly U.S. Treasuries. Banks were affected. It's not just these small banks as well. We've been talking a lot this week uh, about what's been happening uh, with Silvergate, which has gone into voluntary liquidation. Big declines there for a Silvergate Bank. Uh, in amongst some of the other smaller ones as well, big declines yesterday for Signature Bank down 12 and a quarter percent. But it really doesn't stop there because we've got losses across the board for all the major banks. Look at these losses here in JP Morgan Chase in amongst some of the uh, worst performing uh, markets for this bank in a number of months. Uh, and uh, Citigroup, another one on the way down. I'm basically just running through the list of all the banks I can think of that trade heavily in the States. And another one here, we've got uh, Bank of America, BAC, down below the supporting line here uh, that we had established back on the 16th of December. Now, at levels there, not seen since the 13th of October. These big banks are all all sessions on the IG platform, and you can trade these after nine o'clock this morning. But it's not doesn't stop there either, because it's the crypto world which has been hit, as we saw Signature Bank, uh, Silvergate recently with all the problems. And today, significantly, possibly, that we've got Bitcoin now below 20,000. Uh, big declines over the last three or four days or so, 19,977. Big losses as well for uh, Litecoin, Ether, and all the other uh, major uh, players in this uh, particular space. So you can see how we're being affected here. Just want to show you what's going on in on Wall Street as well. Yesterday, this is the Dow Industrials. Uh, it's called Wall Street on the IG platform. Big losses, well past the 200-day moving average. A little bit of money going in at these lows that we've seen recently. But this is all ahead of the non-farm payroll data as well. Big losses taking the S&P 500 also below the 200-day moving average at 38.99. We are seeing support at the 200-day moving average, though, for the tech sector uh, with the NASDAQ uh, holding above that. And in fact, you can see money going across the board onto some of these Wall Street indices. So we're interested to see how things do open a little bit later on. Um, that's all ahead of non-farm payroll data. Let me just quickly update you as well on what's been happening overnight, because we've seen a big moment in the history of the uh, Bank of Japan. Uh, well, Mr. Kuroda, the uh, Japanese central bank uh, key uh, player, the governor, has uh, in his last meeting, uh, Harahuku uh, Kuroda has kept interest rates on hold at a negative 0.1 percent. Ten-year bond yield target maintained around flat. Uh, as I said, this was the last meeting from Mr. Kuroda. Many expect his successor, Kazuo Ueda, to phase out yield curve control. Ueda last month echoing Kuroda's calls to keep this ultra-loose policy in place, but said he was open to the idea of reassessing the current policy framework. Economists believe Ueda will abandon that yield curve control in June at his second meeting at the helm of the Bank of Japan. So we're looking ahead to that. Let me show you what's going on on the currency markets. This is a little long, well, long-legged doji candle at the moment at 136.38. We are where we opened the trading day on the dollar yen, so no move there in terms of the overall uh, picture. Um, in amongst some of the other headlines we've just seen break across the terminals is UK GDP numbers, and UK GDP coming in slightly stronger than had been expected. Uh, the GDP monthly reading this is for January, up 0.3% after a half of 1% uh, contraction in December. Expectations had been for expansion, but by a margin of just 0.1%. So that's slightly better than expected. But industrial uh, production is weaker than had been forecast, down 0.3%. percent we have been looking for a 0.2% drop in January. Uh, we got that coming in weaker than expected as well, year on year, at 4.3%. Let me just show you what's going on with sterling. Um, all these uh, currency markets are really going to be um, affected by this 130 release from non-farm payrolls. Third day in a row of gains for sterling against the US dollar, back up above the 200-day moving average at 119.49. In fact, the entire candle above that 200-day SMA as we see things there stand at the moment. So 1.30 p.m. today, February non-farm payroll data. Economists expecting 205,000 job creations. Last month, the report surprised the market by announcing an enormous 517,000 jobs having been created in the month of January. The unemployment rate is expected to remain this time at 3.4%. Average hourly earnings to rise 4.7% year on year after a 4.4% rise this time last month. It'll be interesting to see if we get new adjustment to that 517,000 jobs created when we get the uh, adjustment elements coming through. I want to show you what's happening with the dollar basket. 
uh, not much move um, ahead of that uh, non-farm payroll data. Uh, but the way to trade this course is the euro dollar third day in a row gains at the moment at 105.98. If you think that there is going to be another strong number, uh, then this little bit of a retracement we've seen for the euro could well be unwound and you'd go short on this market with a stop above where we are. We'll have to see how things develop and what the sort of uh, market positioning is ahead of that. We'll be live on the IG platform at 125 today as we look towards the start uh, of, uh, sorry, the uh, release of that data at uh, at 1.30. Now, let's move on to take a look at what's happening in other areas of the market. Just one company I think it's worth looking at this morning, which I wasn't expecting to come through, and that's uh, Barclay Group, the FTSE 250 listed uh, house builder. It said sales since the end of September 2022 were around 25% down than what it says was a strong first five months of the financial year. This, though, the company says is a resilient performance in the current context of the market volatility since the end of September. And it says reflects the underlying demand for quality homes in London and the southeast. Well, you know what? It would say that because it's talking about its own um, uh, stable of offerings. Uh, but Barclay has reaffirmed that it's on target to deliver pre-tax earnings of approximately £600 million for the year ending the 30th of April 2023. Uh, the stock will open at 40.41. Losses across the board. Uh, at uh, the um, losses across the board uh, yesterday for house builders at Barclay Group at uh, 4041, which is where that stock uh, will open. Let's take a look at what else is uh, happening uh, with uh, the uh, stock uh, stocks to watch. Uh, we've got big declines late last night, all sessions on the IT platform for Oracle Group. Uh, it dropped 5.5% in extended trade uh, last night as the company failed to meet the overly optimistic cloud forecast. Let's take a look at the figure uh, for Oracle. It narrowly missed quarterly revenue estimates. Oracle earning $1.22 per share on earnings on revenues of $12.39 billion in the quarter. Analysts were expecting $1.20 per share on revenues of $12.42 billion. Now, the company forecast fourth quarter revenue growth to between 15 and 17% uh, compared with analyst estimate of 16.2%. But as I said, if you look deeper down into some of these numbers, it certainly seemed like analysts were a little bit disappointed with the cloud business. Look at the uh, share price reaction. Uh, 83.46 is where we closed out yesterday's uh, trade uh, as we look towards uh, the start of today's all sessions at nine o'clock this morning. Uh, as I said, it is an all session stock. So you have all, all of last night's uh, uh, downside built into that. So we're certainly expecting a lower start uh, to the trading day today uh, when that stock gets underway. Gap shells, uh, gap the gap, the retailer fell around 8% late last night uh, in the market and extended trade after posting a larger than expected drop in its fourth quarter figures. The big loss coming through for the gap, closing retailer recording a loss of 75 cents a share on revenues of 4.24 billion. The street expected a loss per share of 47 cents. With the Federal Reserve prepared to raise interest rates more than expected, consumers have turned more cautious and have uh, reined in their spending on non-essential items. Let me show you what happened uh, with the uh, share price last night. Uh, as I said, it is a, uh, it's not all sessions on the uh, IG platform, so you don't get the, the trade. But nonetheless, it closed out yesterday's session uh, down at levels we've seen since the 6th of January. Add in the slide we saw in the post market yesterday, 8%, and you're down to this line of support at the 110, uh, or sorry, 1110 level, uh, which is a 200 day uh, moving average. Let's move away from some of the stocks uh, worth looking at and take a look at the commodity markets. I want to begin uh, with oil. Just to quickly recap what happened this time last week with the Baker Hughes rig count. Um, survey showing a drop in total rig count to 749 from 753 previous week. The number of oil rigs in operation fell by eight to 592. The uh, oil market's quite interesting in as much as this rising line of support continues to hold up at 75.18 for US crude. Uh, we've seen four touches on this, so it's a, a fairly decent line of rising support. MACD now having turned negative. The blue line's gone below the red dotted line on US crude, which indicates to me that the momentum is picking up on the downside. So I think if we do get a break and the candle close below this rising line of support, you're on the way down to 72.65, uh, which would uh, take you down to that total retracement. Uh, Brent is interesting. This is a longer term um, up uh, line of uh, support that we've got at 80.95. Again, a bit like uh, US crude. If you get a break of that, uh, you're then on the way down to further lower lows. Uh, MACD, as I say, picking up 
uh, on the downside. Let's take a look at what's been happening uh, with spot gold uh, up for a third day in a row. Um, as we see some sort of uh, safety trade, I guess, around what's happening uh, with spot gold. But I think it's worth looking at uh, what's happening with silver. Spot silver continues to um, hold on the recent downside. And in fact, in today's session, we've got a new lower low, uh, lowest we've seen there since the 4th of November uh, for the price of silver. A lot of base metals on the way down as well. Aluminium, two months low. Nickel, four months low. Iron ore, nine months low. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, we're back at 10.30 with Charting the Markets as we look out towards the start of what's going to be beginning with the lower start of the European markets expected this morning uh, as a result of concerns around what's happening in the banking sector at the moment. Looking out for the FTSE 350 banking sector at the start of the day's trade, we could well see some negativity there as we see concerns circle around that sector.